Hey, welcome. I'm John from Infinite Remote Control, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Thunder Tiger MT4G3. So this is probably going to be a really long review, and um, I'm just going to start by telling you what I thought of the car. Now this is my channel, my car, and my review, so I'm entitled to my own opinion. I know a lot of you guys out there are not going to quite agree with what I have to say about this car, but this is just my experience with the car and um, I'm kind of comparing it to how, uh, my experience with other cars. So I give this a 6 out of 10 and um, later into the video um, when I discuss the negatives of this car I'll explain to you why. Um, would I recommend the car? Yes and no. I would recommend the car to only certain people. Um, not everybody's gonna like the car and a lot of the people that are in the hobby aren't gonna really like the car how how the durability is on it um, but they are also going to like the car but there really is a specific um, group group of people that are going to like this car so um, just to start I'm going to tell you the, the upgrades that I have on it. I have a T-Bone Racing bumper in the front and the rear there's no real point in upgrading except for just a little bit, bit of protection um, especially when you're running over sticks and that kind of stuff just keep it out of your drivetrain um, then I've upgraded the 500,000 weight oil in the center diff. Um, I have the A to Z rock crawler brace right here. And um, I've done the O-ring trick um, to keep the retaining pins um, that hold the wheel hexes on. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's um, I'm still running all stock oils. Um, so let's get right into this review. Oh yes, also I'm running a Savox. SA1283 servo and I'm also running spectrum receivers the stock radio system out of the box was great I loved it um, it performs just like the Traxxas radios uh, really standard and it actually has three channels and it had a nice dual rate switch it had um, endpoint adjustments um, it really it was a great radio um, it's too bad but I uh, had to sell it um, and the servo this servo is somewhat fast I believe it's like um, 0.13 seconds to do a full 90 degrees without any load on it and it's got about 550 ounce inches of torque on it um, so it it is stronger than what this car needs but um, it's not quite as fast as I would have liked um, but it's it's plenty fast for it on um, the stock servo was a little bit too slow and not quite strong enough for me so I put it into my stampede and I actually broke the uh, mounting brackets off of the case so uh, the servo was thrown away because they don't sell a replacement case um so the biggest thing about this monster truck that I really like is that it's a truggy layout which means that it's going to be really easy to work on it means that it's going to have a nice low center of gravity that when this car has load on it the chassis actually sits just below the, just right there um, below the the wheels so um, nice low center of gravity chassis it helps it skid right over any obstacles because it's so flat and again like I said easy to work on um, um, the next it's a great setup out of the box I found that everything was tuned properly uh, good springs I mean it basically was set up for all around like if you wanted to drive it on road off road through grass through rough dirt it pretty much was handled, able to handle everything. Um, I did adjust it with some preload spacers. Um, and the only thing that I really had a problem was was center diff. And out of the box, on 5S, I could do a standing backflip with the stock oil, but I just wanted to have a little bit more control when I was jumping it through the air. And to bring up the 5S that I'm using, I'm using a Skylipo 4000 milliamp hour uh, 5S. This is all that I've run in it. And um, I put about 50 packs through this car, so I've got it really well tested. Um, everything was properly assembled, not so much properly Loctited or even Loctited at all. Um, but in terms of like, was the gear mesh set properly? Um, were there screws that weren't always screwed in? No, everything was properly assembled. Another positive were these huge monster truck tires, and these are bigger than um, you know Revo tires um, they really help this truggy raise the ride height 
keeping the chassis below um, the center of gravity with this car and um, it just they help this car get over pretty much every obstacle but also keeping the performance great I would actually buy these over probably Proline trencher, trenchers and uh, other aftermarket setups just because the wheels were nicely balanced they still haven't bent too bad and this tread is holding up after a full year of heavy driving mostly on concrete but also on dirt and um, the the setups very good and very soft and the foams are well matched so the stock gearing on this car is really also perfect for everything that you're going to be doing I have not had to change the pinion out um, the motor runs cool even when I'm pulling myself on a skateboard with this car which is one of the great things about this car it has so much power but I'll get into, get into that next um, the pinion is stock I believe actually I don't know what it is maybe 13 or 14 tooth and it's the stock 50, 50 tooth spur uh, I've never had a problem with any of that stuff stripping thought I might but I haven't yet um, so it has it comes with a proven ESC at least this is a rebranded Hobbywing 150 amp ESC so that that's actually a great ESC um, nobody really has any problems with it I had one problem with it it doesn't detect 5S lipos so I had to buy this programming card which I'm actually glad that I did so I could adjust some other settings but I had to adjust that down to uh, 2.9 uh, volts for the lipo cutoff just so that it, it would accept the 5s lipo because it was reading my 5s as a 6s and that's a common problem um, with the rebranded uh, Ace RC Hobby Wing ESC. Um, I ended up just turning that uh, detection off completely because it would kind of like auto shut down even with that uh, programmed as it is. That also might be my lipos since they're sky lipo. Uh, they're not great lipos but they were cheap that's why I bought them and uh, the discharge C rating might have just gone a little bit too low um, and that's why it went down to quarter throttle and then off um, so uh, the ripper motor does a great job it the mounting plate at least looks something uh, like a, a 10 shock would use but not what castle would use I have absolutely no complaints with the motor. It runs cool. It's got so much power. It, as I said, it can pull me and it can pull a lot of other stuff. Um, it gets you up to top speed really quick. And um, it, you can do 100 meter wheelies with this car. Um, it's just such a powerful car. And that's one thing that I love about this car. It is really, really powerful. Um, Next up is that it handles better than any other car on road, off road, and mostly in the air. Or better than any other monster truck, I should say. Not racing truggy, but monster truck. Because it's got this truggy layout, it um the the weight is evenly balanced and it keeps everything low to the ground, um, or below the tires. And it's got the center diff where most monster trucks have a slipper clutch, so that's also a really great thing with this car is that it has that center diff um, so you can you can more or you can tune this car just a little bit better also if you are somebody that doesn't like the constant wheelies um, you can just uh, put some uh, um, uh, like uh, 50 or 100 weight oil into that or 100,000 weight oil excuse me and um, you'll be able to control this car a lot better and you can really predict what it's going to do. If it's in the air and the front is way too high like that, you can just hit, just touch the brakes a little, and then it goes right back down to where it's supposed to be. Um, I really can't control any other car uh, in the air as good as I can control this one. And that's um, with two-wheel drives and four-wheel drives, like the Stampede, the Slash, the Rustler, those kinds of cars. This It also helps because it's a 1-8 scale and it's got such big tires. Um, this car is under $600, which really makes it a great deal. And um, you, you're you looking at another $200 once you put in upgrades, and you'll see what I'm talking about later. And um, a battery, of course, and charger, but that is if you're buying it without all of that stuff. 
Um, it has its own fan club, which is really something. If you've never seen WonderTiger.com, I'd tell you to go check it out. Oh, that's another great positive. There are so many people that just love the car. And a lot of people say that they have problems with these two aluminum pieces right here, um, where they're too soft and that the A-arms kind of stretch the hole um, inside and it makes, um, it kind of like lets these retainers out. I never had that problem, so that's a, a positive at least for me. Now to the negatives. And this list is going to be a lot longer. We'll just start with um, the first time that I ever drove the car. I Loctited these, but obviously I didn't Loctite them enough. Um, and a nut flew right off after the first couple of minutes of driving. I would really recommend cleaning off the wheel hexes, getting all of the oil off, even maybe with a motor cleaner. And then uh, just gobbing on the blue Loctite or maybe even green Loctite and um, just really making sure that those nuts are going to stay on the car. Then I have a broken arm and shock mount. Um, oh, excuse me, a broken arm at the shock mount. So it was actually in the rear here and it just cracked right there. Um, yeah, so I got new arms, they're like nine dollars, but that was too bad. I've also broken another arm right at, at this uh, connecting point, but uh, that also has not happened again. But something that shouldn't have happened, especially when people say that this car is as durable as it is. Um, the drive shafts, at least for the center, are okay. And they do stand up pretty well, but for their thickness, I actually was very surprised. I've bent these uh, rear drive shafts every time that I drive the car and I've actually bent one so much that you could see the twists in it and it was bent beyond repair so I had to get new drive shafts for the rear um, that's something that's really unfortunate that the drive shafts can't quite handle the power even on 5S but the front I haven't had too many problems bending those but the rears they bend way too much and uh, I don't and I've looked around on forums and people don't really see um, any other drive shafts that will fit into this car. Alright, now I've uh, broke slash cracked a front um, hub carrier, which is that piece right there. People also call them pillow balls um, because you've got this uh, little metal pillow that fits into the hub carrier. Um, I've cracked it. It just cracked right up like that so that the arm could easily pop out if you landed a jump um, with any force or if you um, kind of turned and hit into a curb or something it would pop right out so I eventually had to get a new new uh, pillow balls I broke a rod end which I broke that one I just replaced it with the Traxxas one and when you see how short the Traxxas one is compared to these longer Thunder Tiger ones you think like oh that one's gonna break really quickly but that still hasn't broken and I haven't broken any others so um, but one more one more strike against the plastic on this car so the plastic I have to say it really isn't as strong as people are making it out to be they are like oh the plastic it's so thick it's so durable mm, not really um, I have broken dozens of body posts and mounts, so I've, I've just lowered the uh, body post in the front down as low as it can possibly go, so there's, there's no way to break the post now, but I have broken the mount that mounts the post to the arm, and also in the back here to the wing mount slash wheelie bar, um, it, you can just kind of move it up and down, so... I've had to replace both the front and the rear many times, especially before I figured out that I need to just lower the body post down entirely. I broke those quite a few times. Um, also, I lost a wheel pin, um, like a retaining pin that holds the wheel hex um, onto the drive shafts. And there's actually a small grub screw that fits right into there, and I guess it just backed out the slightest bit, allowing the pin to to come out from inside of the wheel. I'll probably do a video on how you can fix that, but pretty much you just buy O-rings 
and then you wrap it around where that pin goes and you also lock tight inside um, where that grub screw goes but really the only way to fix that is to use the o-ring um, and it's not too bad of a fix you just want to be really careful because apparently a lot of people have had that problem I've also had grub screws come out of the drive shaft and also the pinion so more things that you're going to need to lock tight also I've had uh, chat uh, the screws that um, go through metal like those and on the chassis um, back out uh, because they were not loctited from the factory. Um, the servo is a little weak as I had already said. Everything needs to be loctited. Just make sure that you go through this car and loctite everything that's m that, that goes into metal. That's just so important. Um, not all batteries work um, because of this silly cage. Um, the caging that, that goes around the car. I love this cage, uh, don't get me wrong, but it just limits your battery options. The biggest 5S that I could put in there was a 4000 mAh, which is a bit low um, in terms of amps for an 8 scale, but it's okay. Um, also, if you're using a battery with uh, the terminals that you need to uh, plug into, they give you this this um, neat little adapter, hold on, let me grab it. It consists of this, and I don't think I have the other piece with me, but it consists of this part right here, and then another harness. So it pretty much just uh, automatically puts it into series for you with the terminals, but there's a flaw. Since they only did half of them with these um, flat terminals, and then the other half, um, were them going upright you can only use batteries and listen to me carefully they have the positive on the right and the negative on the left if you do not have batteries that have positive on the right and negative on the left like some of the turnages they have it opposite um, when you go to put them in like this they're not going to fit there's no possible way for you to configure them so that they fit Okay, everybody's talked about this, just wanted to let you guys know. And two 5,000 milliamp hour 2S LiPo packs fit in here perfectly. So that's if you want to run the 4S. And um, it was great that they gave you that uh, little series connector. It was just too bad that it didn't quite work properly. Um, the body is crap. I ruined this within like the first four runs, maybe five runs of driving this car because it's so heavy and it occasionally will, you know, cartwheel or something and land on its body. This thing is so flimsy. I mean, look at that. It's, it's way too cheap. So, if you're looking at a new body that's about $30. I actually ended up just modifying a slash body and that worked absolutely perfectly. I'll do a video over that and it still is holding up strong. I also got a uh, Proline Raptor body for this. Now, one the, the biggest problem that I had which made me get this brace was that these diff ears that connect the um, front shock tower to the car, or specifically the diff, break off of any huge jump. And not even huge jumps, like short jumps, or like low little jumps, maybe five feet in the air. That will break it off. and. You know, it should not happen. I've broken it five times before I ended up just getting this A to Z rock crawl brace. Okay, the car doesn't do that anymore now that I got the brace. So great job A to Z rock crawlers. Uh, glad you guys could help me out there. But it's unacceptable that that broke five times. And I mean, every single time that I went out to jump this car, did a hard bash, those things would break. Well, every jumping sh session I had, after like five jumps, they were done. Um, the uh, shock towers bend, which is a bummer. Um, all of the aluminum on this car bends. Um, they used a slightly, um, uh, I guess, like weak aluminum, and it's kind of malleable. Um, although it, it's thick, it's not 70, 75 grade, or if 
if it is, it's a really weak version of it. Um, but I've bent these shock towers multiple times. I just bend them back. They never get bent that bad, but they do bend. And you can find upgrades for it. You can also find upgrades for the pillow balls. You can also find upgrades. All of these are aluminum. Uh, for the A-arms on uh, Asia T's website, but that just goes to show, I mean, they those are parts that break on this car, and the durability isn't that great. Now, if we left it at this, I would give this car an okay for durability. Um, you can double up the aluminum shock towers, and they're not going to bend. Um, I really haven't broken any of the plastic parts more than more than once or twice, uh, for the exception of those. Um, and that's okay because the car is so heavy, but they should have they should have worked a way around this, like maybe securing it from both sides or already putting in a brace like that. So that part breaks all the time. As I said, I give the durability an okay at this point, but this is what kills the durability, the chassis bends. And I hope that you guys have stayed for the entire video to watch this part because it's unacceptable that an RC car, even a $600 RC car, has a chassis that bends. And it doesn't bend in the center, like I had originally thought when I read about chassis bending. It actually bends right here and right here. And you can't really see it on the camera because these wheels are in the way, but um, it is unacceptable that, that it bends up like that. And I didn't really notice it until I looked for it. And Every time that I drove the car, and you can't really, you can't see it on camera because of how the lens uh, kind of like fish eyes it because it's looking at it from straight down and then it, it fixes the distortion within the camera. But these are actually bent inward about five degrees from normal. And every time that I'd run the car, I'd see, I'd see that the, the, the front shock tower has moved in a little and then the front, or the, the rear has moved in and then the front. And now it's to the point where they're really angled in and it's, Unbelievable. People make sh uh, chassis braces for this car, and you can buy them online for $55, but who's going to do that? Who's going to put $55 in to fix a freaking chassis that bends? You can double up the chassis, um, but that's ridiculous. That's, that's more and more weight to the car, and that should not happen. Other Chuggies, Low C, Mugen. Durango, they do not have chassis that bend, and that's just the problem with this car. They did not use strong enough aluminum, and it's unfortunate because this car would have been great if they had used better aluminum because, like I said, the plastics broke a couple times. Uh, you know, that that's what's going to come with a cheaper car. low seas plastics probably wouldn't have broken, um, along with Mugen's, but... Because this is a cheaper car, I'm going to say, okay, the plastics, part, some of them broke. That's all right. But the aluminum shouldn't be bend at all. That's unacceptable. Sorry, Thunder Tiger, but because your parts um, just aren't up to par, I'm not going to give this car a great review. If you were to drive it on road um, at a park on just grass and dirt, you're going to absolutely love this car. You're not going to have any complaints. It's going to work perfectly for you. You're probably only going to run it on 4 to 5S. But if you're some hardcore guy that's out there that's going to be jumping this car like I do, and you're going to be just punishing it, you're going to need to put in a lot of money for upgrades and uh, make some custom modifications, and I'm not willing to do that. I've had rustlers and stampedes in multiple other cars, even minis, um, be able to take more abuse than what this car can take. And I'm not going to say that it's because this is a heavy car. Don't get me wrong, it is a heavy car. Probably about eight, eight or nine pounds with the battery in it. But that does not make it okay that the aluminum is bent on it. So I'm going to wrap it up here, try to keep the, the video at 25 minutes. Thanks for watching, you guys. Would I recommend the car? Again, only to a couple of people. I give this a 6 out of 10. Um, and yeah, I mean, it has potential. It just needs work. And a lot of people aren't going to be willing to, to put in the time for the work. So talk to you guys later. Check out some of my bashing videos. 
make sure to subscribe.